Hello, Lily, the bunny said in a gentle voice. I've been expecting you. Lily's eyes widened in amazement. You can talk, she exclaimed. But how? And why were you expecting me? In this video, I'll show you how to build an AI solution that autonomously creates beautiful bedtime stories. Thanks to stable diffusion, it not only writes captivating text, but also generates stunning illustrations. You can create beautiful bedtime stories for your children, complete with enchanting illustrations that captivate their imagination. Alternatively, you can craft compelling stories about current events happening around the world. The two men began to see the power of their unique partnership. Donald's boldness and Joe's steadiness, when combined, were a force to be reckoned with. 99% of videos about Claude focus on using the web UI, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. The real power lies in leveraging the APIs and equipping the model with custom functionalities. Subscribers of AI for Devs might recall that a few weeks ago, I attempted to create a children's book using Autogen agents, but the results were rather poor. I believed there had to be a better way, and after hours of research I found a piece of code published by Anthropic demonstrating how to combine the Anthropic API with Stable Diffusion, enabling the model to autonomously create prompts and images using Stable Diffusion. The idea is to inform Claude that it has access to an image generation API and must follow a specific syntax when it wants to create an image. Whenever Claude's response includes the syntax, we know we need to call Stable Diffusion to generate the image. The initial attempts with just one page were quite encouraging. The story was good and the images were incredibly beautiful. But how can we create, for example, a five-page document with images and text and save it as a PDF? And to make things even more challenging, how can we create a cohesive story as opposed to five pages with independent stories? The main idea is to create a loop that generates one page after another. We use three different prompts, one for the beginning, one for the middle pages, and one for the last page. But how do we keep track of what we've already written and how the previous illustrations look? Pretty easy. We save all texts and image prompts we have already created in a list and each iteration gets everything created so far as context. Creating a PDF is easy, but creating a PDF that looks like the page of a children's book is pretty hard. After 100 tries and errors, I had a layout that looked pretty okay. No worries, in a few minutes, I'll explain the details. I'll go through each step with you and you can adapt the code completely to your needs. Whether you prefer a bedtime story or a political satire, it's completely up to you. If you haven't worked with Python and Visual Studio Code yet, please check out the introduction video series on AIfordevs.com. We explain in detail for absolute beginners how to work with Python and APIs. As always, we first create a virtual environment to keep dependencies cleanly separated and activate it. Next, we install Anthropic, Requests and Pillow. We then create a file named app.py using the touch command. In the first step, I want to show how to create images with stable diffusion. First, import the necessary libraries. Then, we create a constant for the stability API key, which reads the key from the environment variable. We add the method for creating images. Let's take a closer look at this. It sends a post request to the API endpoint with the prompt image dimensions and other parameters. The API returns a JSON response containing the generated image in base64 format. We need to save this base64 image string locally to use it in the PDF files. To achieve this, we create a simple save image method that takes a base64 string and a file name as parameters and saves the image locally. Let's trigger the gen image method to see if everything works as expected. We provide a simple prompt for this, for example, photorealistic city. Then we save the generated image under the name future PNG. Before we can start the script, we need a stability AI API key. We visit the stability AI platform and generate a new API key to do this. We can then paste this key as an environment variable. Now we are ready to run the script. We see that the image has been saved as future PNG. We can open it and see an image of a futuristic city. 
Next, we want to connect to the Anthropic API. First, we need to import Anthropic. Then, we create another constant for the Anthropic API key, which reads the key from the environment variable. And we set up an Anthropic client. This client is passed the key and can be used in the following method. This function creates a simple call to the Anthropic AI using the Claude 3.5 sonnet model. It sends a user prompt to the Claude API specifying a maximum of 1024 tokens. The function then extracts and returns the generated text from the API's response. The special feature here lies in the system prompt, which we will set up shortly. This will tell the model that it can also generate images. For this, we create a new file prompts.py and paste the prepared system prompt into it. We tell the model that it is a helpful, harmless AI assistant, but with a special feature. It can use image generation APIs. And for this, it should use a specific syntax, namely function call create image prompt. We also set a few rules. For example, make your stable diffusion prompts clear and concise. Use detailed subjects and scenes to make your stable diffusion prompts more specific. Contextualize your prompts by providing rich details. Do not overload your prompt with details. All of this ensures that the quality of the images will be outstanding. We can now import this new system prompt from the prompts.py file. Let's see what the result from Claude looks like. But before we do that, we need to set the Anthropic API key. For this, we go to the Anthropic website, log in, and create an API key, which we then copy and paste. Now we want to run the script and look at the result from Sonnet. And we see at the top we have the story, and at the bottom we have a part with function call, create image, with a prompt that precisely describes how the image for this page should look. Good work so far. Now we want to create the final PDF. First, we insert a method that can create as many PDF pages as we want. We can pass the number of pages we want to create as a parameter, and the pages will be added to a pages list. We have three different prompts. The first prompt for the first page, the second prompt for the last page, and the third prompt for all the pages in between. The important thing here is that we always pass the context of what has already been created to the following pages. Next, we want to split Claude's response into a text part and an image prompt. For this, we need a special method, which we will add shortly. This method takes Claude's entire response and splits it into the story part and the part that describes the image. To make the code work, we still need to import RE for regular expressions. Now we have everything we need to actually create the PDF. For this, we add the create PDFs method. Before I go into the functionality, let's first create the necessary imports to make the method work. Let's now get a basic understanding of the create PDF method. The function generates a PDF from a list of text and image prompts. It uses the Report Lab library to create a PDF with custom styling for text and generated images from the Gen Image function. To generate the PDF, we call Generate Story Pages once. Then we call Create PDF with the generated pages and add a file name. We start the script with Python app.py, and we see that a story PDF has been created. Let's open our brand new PDF file and we see a three-page story with beautiful graphics and text. Of course, the story can be changed at any time via the prompt, and your creativity knows no bounds.